Hi folks, and welcome back to our discussion on planning for your next de expedition. This series is focused on mainly shortwave listeners, uh, but also may be of interest to uh, less experienced or new amateur radio operators who haven't had a chance to uh, get out operating uh, away from your normal home QTH. So I hope there's something here that, uh, that you might find of interest. But if you come here first before checking out part one of this series, then it'd probably be a good idea to make sure that you have a look at that video too, because it has some important things to consider when selecting your chosen DX location. Now, on with part two. We are going to focus here on the stuff that you need to gather together for your trip. How portable do you want to be on this trip? Our choices include small handheld radios such as the various Texan models and the range of receivers like the Eatons and the Sangians and the Grundigs and all those others that are out there on the market. These days many DXs are also using the software defined radios attached to uh, laptop computers and they're doing that with great success. And then you've got the big boys communications receivers and transceivers like the uh, uh, ICOM R75 receiver, the ASU FRG100 receiver, and all the various amateur transceivers that are available from Kenwood, Yasu, and ICOM. Now, if you only have one radio, then the choice is easy. But for those of us with multiple receivers or transceivers, then the choice comes down to portability, ease of operation, which antenna you want to use, uh, either the inbuilt whip antenna or an, or an external long wire antenna, uh, and the space that you have available for transporting your gear. Personally, I find myself using a variety of radios depending on the situation. I have a handheld portable for quick DX trips out in the field, or if, you know, for perhaps an hour or two of band scanning, plus a medium sized communications receiver and a larger HF uh, transceiver for longer and more concentrated listening sessions. My current choice of radios these days depends on the type of de-expedition being undertaken. So I use either the uh, Texan PL680, the Yaesu FRG100 receiver, or the uh, Kenwood TS2000 transceiver. If you're operating from a holiday shack, then there's a fair chance that you'll have uh, access to plenty of AC power at hand. Uh, extension power leads and multiple output uh, power boards are very handy here. But if you're uh, going to be off the grid, then consideration needs to be given to batteries. Uh, even if you are running a portable handheld receiver, backup batteries should be added to the list. For the larger communications receivers and transceivers, I use uh, extra heavy duty sealed lead acid batteries uh, and gel cells as the current draw from the larger radios tends to be a, a bit greater. Uh, don't forget to include a charger if you're planning to be away on an extended holiday. The choice of de-expedition antennas is really a topic in itself and beyond the scope of, vid of this video but they range from internal whip antennas of a small portable receiver to long wires, dipoles, beverage antennas and a host of others. However, one consideration is determining how you are going to suspend a wire antenna. Trees, fences and other structures are obvious choices. Attaching the antenna onto the structure or the trees is another matter. Um, Antenna launchers such as potato guns and slingshots and gas-filled explosive devices and even the old-fashioned bow and arrow have all been used with varying degrees of success and probably with a few unintended injuries as well. Indeed, I believe much of the fun of the expeditions involved getting the antenna into the air. One handy tool for suspending an antenna is a type of telescoping fishing pole uh, that we call here in Australia a squid pole. Uh, very popular uh, with uh, many amateur radio operators here in Australia for use in field day and uh, portable emergency communications operations. They are lightweight 
and highly flexible poles. Uh, they can be used to suspend horizontal, inverted V and vertical antennas and are quite effective in giving at least part of your antenna some significant height. You can buy these in various sizes between 6 and 10 metres, that's 20 to 30 feet, uh, when they're fully extended. And they telescope back into a, an easier transportable length of about 1.2 metres or 4 feet. Simply strapping the pole to a fence post or a metal stake or a homemade tripod base, as I have here, can easily get your antenna into the air. If using a simple long wire antenna, one handy device that makes life much easier is a good spooling tool to roll out and reel in the antenna. It stops the wire becoming a tangled mess and significantly speeds up the process of setting up and packing up, especially in the dark, and I, I speak from personal experience on that. Your uh, local hardware store will probably have the right type of spool for your purposes. Unless you are using a portable whip antenna or a pre-cut, pre-tuned antenna, an antenna tuning unit or antenna coupler can, uh, can really assist in making a simple uh, long wire resonant on most of the bands that you're going to be tuning. A small uh, antenna coupler is all that's required and a company like uh, MFJ has an excellent range of these that are ideal for the purpose. Another handy tool is a laptop or a tablet computer or your cell phone that can be pressed into action for recording audio and even video of stations monitored from your radio. Of course, if you're using an SDR for listening, then uh, inbuilt recording facilities are available in the computer itself. I always throw in a small toolkit. That includes uh, these days uh, wire cutters and wire strippers, uh, pliers, screwdrivers, electrical insulating tape and, and other small handy tools that I found useful over, over time. Your laptop or tablet computer can also be useful for storing references such as broadcasting schedules, frequency lists and other information that will help you identify the station to which you are tuned. A data connection to the internet can be made through your cell phone if necessary. That is, if there's cell phone reception that actually exists at the remote listening post that you've chosen. The World Radio and TV Handbook is another invaluable source that always is included in a de-expedition of mine. One thing that is often overlooked is ensuring that you have all the personal essentials to make your de-expedition as comfortable as possible. During the daytime, I take folding chairs and tables, uh, and they're great for a taste of outdoor DXing. At night time or in the winter time, uh, DXing from the car requires plenty of warm clothing. Food, sustenance in the form of snacks, cookies, fruit, hot chocolate, and other munchies are necessary for an enjoyable outdoor experience. And don't forget insect repellent. Oh, and, uh, and a torch if you're planning to uh, have a night out in the open. Always comes in very handy. Many DXs love to operate in ultralight mode. A small portable radio with a whip antenna and maybe a short length of wire or a small loop antenna for DXing. However, for me, I tend to be at the other end of the spectrum, taking everything except the kitchen sink. You know that t-shirt that says, life's too short for QRP? Well, that's me. I often tend to take far more than I really need. Over the years, and with bitter experiences of forgotten equipment and tools well behind me, I have come up with a checklist of all the possible items that I may need, depending on my goals and duration for my next DX trip. Before I leave home, as I'm putting together my hobby box full of uh, gear and assorted paraphernalia, I, I uh, simply check off what I require for the trip. All of the items that I've mentioned in these two videos are on that checklist. Now my personal checklist is actually in four categories. Various radios, including their respective power leads, batteries and chargers. 
antennas and accessories, including wire, spools, headphones, uh, lead-in coax, um, toolbox, uh, squid pole, antenna launches, um, references such as the uh, World Radio and TV handbook, a uh, laptop or a tablet computer, and other handy printed references and notes, and creature comforts, including a portable folding table, folding chair, refreshments, cell phone, torch, and warm clothing. Now, your checklist will probably vary considerably from mine because your needs and equipment will be different. But believe me, if you're intending to go beyond the ultralight style of operation, then a checklist built up and adapter over time uh, will prove invaluable. Um, avoiding that despair upon arrival at your des destination when you suddenly find that you've left behind a vital power lead. Finally, don't forget that de-expeditioning can be a year-round activity. It's not just something that you do in the warm summer season. Much of the best DX takes place in the evenings or in the wintertime. So get out there and make that happen. And good luck with your de-expeditioning and thanks for watching this video series. 73 and good DX to you all.